Hi there, these comments are for GB, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons. At the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT, you are one of my writing, TOEFL writing boot camp students. You've paid me to error correct an independent writing practice test. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So the good thing is, uh, I just read your essay. You have development of the ideas. You have a clear organization of ideas. You do have some word choice and grammatical issues that are bringing the score down a bit. And that's what I want to do in this video. As I error correct it, I will tell you certain kinds of problems that you're having and then how you can correct those sentence structure issues, those word choice issues, whatever those issues are, I will show you how you can avoid those. So I'm looking at the rubrics here. <coughs> so it says, has some problems with sentence formation and word choice uh, that makes your meaning and ideas unclear. So that's why I'm gonna put you at 3.5 out of four or 22 points out of 30 on this practice test. So I recommend you actually keep keep a writing journal. And as I point out some of the errors, you can write them down. Then you can do some study later on in these areas, right? Okay, so let's start with your introduction. Oh, let's go back to the question first of all so we know what we're answering. Okay, so the question is, imagine you're in a classroom or meeting. The teacher or the meeting leader says something incorrect. In your opinion, which of the following is the best thing to do? Interrupt and correct the mistake right away. Wait until the class or meeting is over and the people are gone and then talk to the teacher or meeting leader uh, or say nothing. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. So you've written about 430... <laughs> One words looks like you develop the topic in two specific reasons, and that's fine. Let's start uh, your first paragraph here. So, education is an important part of students. I'm going to put an apostrophe here. And then, this is what's called a plural possessive noun. So, I'm going to make your uh, noun here plural. Now, I'm going to keep track of some of these issues you're having. So, plural count nouns. Instead of where, I'm going to use in which. Usually, where is better when you're talking about a geographical location. So, you're not here. So, I think in which is a, a more formal and better way to do that. So, in which students gain the knowledge needed for their professional futures. Again, I'm going to make this plural because we're talking about more than one future. Sometimes in a lecture, a student may think that the lecturer states something incorrectly, maybe decide to react in different ways. <coughs> now, if you want to be a little more concise, check this out. I'm going to just use an adverb here. And that takes the place of all those words. So, may decide to react differently. Some students may prefer to interrupt the professor and correct the mistake right away. Some students may wait until the end of the lecture to speak with the teacher. And others may, might decide to say nothing. In my opinion, a student should... And you want to say here, not expect. You want to say wait. The student should wait, so that's a word choice error. That's a big problem, believe it or not, because expect totally changes the meaning of this sentence, and that's not what you're trying to say. So a student should wait until the class is over and then talk. I'm not going to use a comma here. I'll tell you why. You're saying a student should wait and then should talk, so your, your coordinated conjunction 
it's not joining two independent clauses together. You're joining two verbs together. So no comma is needed in this case. And then talk to the professor to avoid interruption and confusion and also to respect the teacher and other listeners. So there we go. So we're done with the introduction. Okay, in your second paragraph here, so you have a transition word to introduce your first point, and you follow the next paragraph with second, so that's uh, parallel. So you're saying first, if a student thinks that a lecturer says something incorrect, he or she should wait until the class is over, and I'm going to say here, until... We want to make sure that we're looking at the word and. It's not joining separate uh, clauses, but, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you're joining two adverb clauses together there. So you should wait until the class is over and until the professor finishes his, I'm going to use the word talk, not talking, to avoid interruption of the lecture or talk. Okay, during a speech, a professor organizes his lecture in all components for the students to help them understand and acquire the information he is teaching. If a student is going to intervene, and very good vocabulary word, at, at, I love that, intervene, which means interrupt, but you're using a synonym to show you have a good range of vocabulary, so very good choice vocabulary. So a student's going to intervene in one point of the lecture. He might end up interrupting the professor. This is a problem. So you say he might, and then you say the professor explains. You're, you're kind of having those two different verbs in the sentence. So that is a problem. However, if you change it to who explains or who is explaining, Using a noun clause there would, would uh, correct that sentence structure error there. So I'm going to put this down. Adjective clauses, this is probably something that you can review. It's, it's basically using what's called uh, multiple clauses. Within a multiple clause, you have an independent clause at the minimum, and then you maybe have one or more dependent or independent clauses attached to that sentence. So you're having some trouble managing these more complicated sentences. So it says, if a student is going to intervene at one point in the lecture, he might end up interrupting the professor who is explaining the study material as intended. In this way, students are going to miss other essential parts of the lecture. I'm going to change this to do to We'll say due to an interruption, students are going to miss other essential parts of the lecture. Moreover, the student might be wrong in his assumption about the mistake and might end up creating maybe, let's put here, more confusion for the audience and unnecessary interruptions for the class. Yeah, I'm going to change this. I, when you're saying class, you're also saying audience, right? So you're kind of repeating this unnecessarily. So this is uh, being a little more concise in your writing. Try to be as clear as you can. Don't put unnecessary words in there if you don't have to. Okay, so I'm looking at it here. So what can we do here? I'm just going to get rid of that. I think this is going to work better. So we have uh, the student might be wrong in his assumption about the mistake. and might end up just creating more confusion and unnecessary interruptions either in the class or for the class. You can probably say it either way. All right, so that is the end of the editing for that particular paragraph. Okay, and in, in this paragraph, first of all, you have the word second as a transition word to add to the previous paragraph, so that effectively shows how your ideas are organized. 
All right, so let's take a look. So a student should wait until the professor is done with his talk to respect the professor and other listeners in the class that may have perceived as should the speech and don't have doubts for any mistake in the professor's talking. This is a disaster. This is exactly why you're getting below 375. This sentence is so beyond repair and it is so difficult to understand what you're saying here. This, if, if we look back at the rubric here, uh, it says, has some problems with sentence formation and word choice that makes your ideas and meanings unclear. Exactly this sentence. So this is where I want you to pay close attention. I'm, I'm going to have to rewrite this sentence to show you, but it's hard for me to figure out exactly what's in your brain and what you're trying to say, but I'm going to have to rewrite it in a way that it is more clear and is more grammatically correct. So that's what we have to try to do right now. All right, let's see if we can figure out what you're trying to say here. So, this is where we're running into trouble here. The problem is that may have perceived as should the speech and don't have doubts for any mistake in the professor's talking, right? That's what we have to straighten out. You could probably say it like this. So we have uh, and other listeners in the class that do not perceive the professor as having made any mistakes in his talk. And then this sentence, we have to get rid of it. It just wasn't clear what you're trying to say. So what did I do here exactly? So let's see if you can understand the grammar here. So I put as having made any mistakes in his talk. So you have uh, other listeners in the class that do not perceive the professor as having made any mistakes in his talk. So that would be a more grammatically correct way to say that idea. Then you say, for example, I remember when I was in college, I remember maybe put that when I was in college. I think that's going to work better using that noun clause connector first and then you put the adverb clause or you embed it inside of that and then we put a comma so you say I remember that and then comma when I was in college comma then we have one of my <coughs> one of my classmates often asked clarifications in the middle of the lecture this way of behaving created unsatisfactory moments for other students that were focused on the teaching on the other side, here's the problem. On the other side or on the other hand, it kind of means you're, you're, you're going to talk about an opposite idea. However, you're saying the professor, professors were not happy being interrupted either. You're saying the students were not happy with the interruption. So I think instead of on the other hand, you need to use a word of addition. So you might say something like, in addition, or furthermore, or moreover. <clears throat> That's probably a better way there, because you're adding to what was said and showing a similarity. Uh, you're not showing the opposite <clears throat> idea. So even instead of in addition, if you wanted to, you could say similarly or in the same manner. That would also work in this case. So you say, in addition, the professors were not happy to be interrupted. We've got to write this down. So this is a problem with gerunds and infinitives. Now, I'm actually going to explain the rule to you here. Now, this rule, I'm going to tell you about gerunds and infinitives. It can help you maybe 30% of the time because gerunds and infinitives are very complicated and part of their use is kind of idiomatic which means there's just a certain way of saying it, a natural way of saying these things, and there's not always a hard, uh, a hard pressed grammatical rule to explain it. But here is the rule that works some of the time. 
Usually, <coughs> we use gerunds when we're talking about completed actions. For example, I enjoyed going to the movies yesterday. So I'm using the gerund going because I, I, I completed that action. How about this? I want to go to a movie today. Now I'm using an infinitive. I'm not going to say there, I want going to a movie today because I'm talking about a potential, not completed action. So in this case, you have, they were not happy to be interrupted. I'm going to say they were not happy being interrupted. Number one, you're using the past tense there. The professors were not happy. So this kind of implies you're talking about a past completed action. So that's why I'm changing it to being. So the professors were not happy being interrupted because most of them have already set up the last part of their class and the dispositions of students for any questions or clarifications needed. Thus, and I like your use of the word thus, a cause effect transition word to help show the connection of ideas there. So that was a very good choice for you. You say thus, a student should avoid such interruptions I'm going to make this an S, interruptions, to respect others that are listening to comprehend the material that the professor, I'm going to put the word the, which is a determiner or noun marker before your singular count noun there, that the professor is teaching. In your conclusion, let's read it here. In summary, I believe that, again, you don't even need that. I would just say, in summary, a student should wait for the professor to finish his teaching and ask a question. I'm going to change this to an infinitive. So to finish his teaching, to ask a question in order to avoid unnecessary interruptions and to respect the teacher and other classmates. In this way, the lecture will not have pauses. And I'm going to change this to waste of time instead of waste of time. So we'll not have pauses and waste of time. And everybody will feel content with the flow of the lecture. Now, in this case, uh, I'm going to put a comma after the word time. Why am I doing this? We're separating here two different independent clauses, and that comes after the word time. Then you have the word and, and then everybody will feel content with the flow of the lecture. And how about this? What if we take the word and and change it to so? Now we're using a cause effect type transition word. And in this case, it's actually a coordinated conjunction. We're showing the cause and the, the effect of the idea. So I think that might even work better than the word and. And adds to an idea, but you're saying the lecture will not have pauses and wasted time. Then you're saying, so everybody will feel content with the flow of the lecture. You could have said in this way, because the lecture will not have pauses and wasted time, everybody will feel content with the flow of the lecture. See what I'm saying? So that cause effect type relationship, I think works a little bit better here than just using the word and. Let's go over the essay one more time. So I'm going to read all of the paragraphs. I might make a few more corrections. Let's see what happens. Education is an important part of students' lives in which students gain the knowledge needed for their professional futures. How about this? We already said students before, right? What if we say the word they? So they gain the knowledge needed for their professional future. Sometimes in a lecture, a student may think that the lecturer states something incorrectly and may decide to react differently. Some students, maybe we could put the word for instance here. For instance, some students may prefer to interrupt the professor and correct the mistake right away. Some students may wait until the end of the lecture to speak with the teacher, and others might decide to say nothing. In my opinion, a student should wait until the class is over and then talk to the professor to avoid interruption and confusion and also to respect the teacher and other listeners. All right, so let's keep going. Your next paragraph. First, if a student thinks that the lecturer says something incorrect, 
He should wait until the class is over and until the professor finishes his talk to avoid interruption of the lecture or talk. During a speech, the professor organizes his lecture and all components for the students to help them understand and acquire the information he is teaching. If a student is going to intervene in one point of the lecture, he might end up interrupting the professor who is explaining the studied material as intended. In this way, due to an interruption, students are going to miss other essential parts of the lecture. Moreover, the student might be wrong in his assumption about the mistake and might end up just creating more confusion and unnecessary interruptions in the class. Second, a student should wait until the professor is done with his talk to respect the professor and other listeners in the class that do not perceive the professor as having made any mistakes in his talk. For example, I remember that when I was in college, one of my classmates often asked clarifications in the middle of the lecture. This way of behaving created unsatisfactory moments for other students who were focused on the teaching. I think, what if we change the word unsatisfactory to distracting? I think that's a, that's a pretty pre precise thing that you could say there, you're saying that these students were distracted by this other student's uh, question, right? So that might be a more precise word to use there. It says, in addition, the professors were not happy being interrupted because most of them, uh, actually, I missed this. We want to use this had. Why? Because you said we're not happy. So we're talking about something in the past and then we have another action which occurs before that past action which, caused, which uh, calls for the past perfect tense. So go to Google. Google this. Using the past perfect tense in English grammar. See if you can get a, get a little bit better understanding of how to use that. So it said most of them had already set up the last part of the class and the dispositions of students for any questions or clarifications needed. Thus, a student should avoid such interruptions to respect others uh, that are listening uh, to comprehend the material that the professor is teaching. Then we have our conclusion. In summary, a student should wait for the professor to finish his teaching to ask a question in order to avoid unnecessary interruptions and to respect the teacher and other classmates. In this way, the lecture will not have pauses and wasted time. So everybody will feel content with the flow of the lecture. And there we go. Okay, so what do you do? <coughs> um, if you go to my online course, I'm going to give you some things to look at. And I might refer you to Google also, and you might use some keywords in the search engines to, to and what you're trying to do here is, for the most part, uh, Gladiola, uh, you actually have a good organization. You're, you have a good thesis. You have arguable topic sentences in your body paragraphs, and you have unifying appropriate related detail in each of those body paragraphs. So overall, your writing has a strong overall connectedness. However, you do have some problems. One of them is the apostrophe. So if you go to the grammar part of my course, you can review that particular lesson. It's, it's maybe grammar 25, 26, the apostrophe. Plural count nouns, putting S's on your plural count nouns. That's something else that you want to take a look at because you had that problem several times in this essay. You're also having problems with word choice. So sometimes, for example, you remember use the word respect instead of the word wait. Um, make sure that you're choosing the right word in the right situation. Uh, I do have a section in the grammar part of my course. It is called Word Choice if you want to review that. Another lesson you want to take a look at in my online TOEFL course is using or not using commas. So you're not 100% clear on that. And guess what? Nobody is. Nobody really knows how to use commas generally. So if you want to advance your writing proficiency, you need a little bit better control over that. And in the grammar part of my course, I have two good videos. One will tell you when commas are needed. The other will tell you when they're not needed. So make sure you take a look at that lesson. And as you go through those lessons, take notes. Um, another lesson in, 
in my course under grammar is adjective clauses and then using sentences with multiple clauses. Those are two specific lessons. Adjective clauses and then sentences with multiple clauses. You will find those lessons in the grammar part of my course. Another lesson is called being more concise. I want you to review that lesson and then the last lesson is gerunds and infinitives. You only had one problem with that. Overall, you're comfortable using infinitives more. You're having some trouble understanding when you need to use gerunds. So when you go through the lesson, my grammar lesson on gerunds and infinitives, the question is, when do gerunds work better than infinitives? That's what you're trying to find out. Okay, so thank you very much for completing this independent writing practice test. I hope that my video correction has given you some ideas on different things that you can do to strengthen your writing so you can score higher. So at least with this essay, for the most part, you're having more of sentence structure, word choice, maybe some punctuation issues. That's what you need to work on in order to advance your writing proficiency. All right, Happy New Year to you, and uh, thank you for completing this writing practice test.